Hi, would you like to learn how to move from customer service to customer experience to customer intimacy to climb that ladder of connection with your consumer to build customer lifetime value and true emotive brand loyalty? Of course you would. Let's get into it. Hi, my name is Ken Hughes. Welcome back to another episode. I am fascinated by the misunderstanding of a few words in the customer experience space. And the first one I want to talk about is loyalty. I come across so many brands and businesses that measure customer loyalty and they mistake transactional loyalty, which is basically I visit your store every week, I visit your website every week, I buy regularly from you. And they mistake that for true customer loyalty. They expect they, they misunderstand frequency and transaction for emotive loyalty. And there's a huge difference between those two things. Like transactional loyalty is just usually convenience, it's efficiency, the store is close to my home, I know the product, it's easy to me to make that purchase. But that doesn't necessarily mean that in your heart you have some kind of connection with the brand, which is of course what customer lifetime value is all about. So think about my life. Like I use Amazon all the time, I'm a Prime member, I order lots of stuff from Amazon, it's easy, the brown boxes are always piling up at my door. Does that mean I've got some kind of emotive relationship to Amazon? Not really. I use them because it's convenient, it's efficient, it's fast. All the basics are right, so it's good. But do I have an emotional connection to Jeff Bezos, uh, personally, no, <laughs> that has put me in a place where if anyone else came along and did it better, I wouldn't move? No. If anyone else came along and did it better, I'd just use them. There's no actual tie for me and the Amazon brand. Similarly with airlines. Like I travel all over the world doing this job. And so in, in the last three months, I think I have probably flown with Aer Lingus, British Airways, SAS, KLM, Lufthansa, United, Delta, American Airlines, Emirates. Like <laughs> I've flown with all those airlines in the last three months. And for every one of those airlines, I have a, a loyalty card. And they would look at my points. And because I travel so much, I would be like a, a top tier member of all those programs. And they would misunderstand, oh, well, he's loyal to us because he flies with us all the time. No. I, I'm not, I mean, it's ironic. I have loyalty cards for 10, 12 airlines. So it's hardly loyal, is it, if I have all those cards? And so you have to understand that transactions are so different from emotional space. Emotional space, emotional loyalty is some kind of connection. Let's look at it through relationship theory. Let's look at it through dating. So like, what is a transaction? A transaction is like a one night stand. You go and have a date. It is what it is. But there's no relationship, is there? There's no emotional bond. And even if you went on to some kind of situationship or like friends with benefits thing, you'd have multiple transactions with the same person, but there's still no emotive depth. And that's the difference between emotive loyalty and transactional loyalty. Because what happens then at some point where one person falls in love and then you have a true proper relationship, there's intimacy, there's emotion, and there's an expectation then of loyalty, isn't there? So now I'm married, or now I'm with you, and you're my partner, and therefore we don't expect to kind of have intimate moments, be they sexual or emotional or physical, with other people, because I will be loyal to you. Now that's the space we want to occupy as brand and business owners. We want some kind of emotional connection between me, the brand, the business, and you, the customer. And that's very different from transactional loyalty. So when you say the word brand loyalty, and when you measure these things with customer satisfaction studies, and you really need to think about, well, hang on, are we measuring the right thing? Are we measuring transaction loyalty here, which is just basically convenience, or are we actually measuring some kind of a motive tie between me and the brand? So that's the first thing. Get that right. Make sure we understand the difference between brand loyalty and emotive loyalty. But then the question, of course, immediately comes up, well, how do you buy how do you buy that connection with the customer? How do you get that connection with the customer that gives them that emotive loyalty? It leads me on to my second misunderstanding of words. So often at conferences, people mix up the word customer service customer experience, and those two things aren't the same thing. We're going to climb a ladder from customer service to customer experience to customer intimacy, and ultimately customer intimacy delivers us that emotive loyalty that we want. So let's start at the bottom there, customer service. What is that? Customer service are all the basics, aren't they? They're just the hygiene factors today. It's the please and thank you, it's the smile, it's the being efficient, it's being convenient, it's being instant, it's being all the things that the customers expect. One click, one swipe, easy, no pain points. Um, I get it, I want it, I get it now. And that used to be kind of value adding maybe 20 years ago, but of course today it's not. Today it's just expected that you, you will be there for me when I need you as a customer, you will deliver instantly, and all those things have become just hygiene factors. And so I think there's a mistake in thinking, well, that's customer experience. No, that's just getting the basics right. So look at your business first and make sure that the basics are right. Make sure that everything is in place. That means that the service that the customer expects from you is going to be guaranteed. And there's no point in measuring that, by the way, in satisfaction, because yeah, people just expect that. They expect it to be right first time every time. If you're not doing that, that's where you start, because there's no way you're going to build a mode of loyalty if the basics are wrong. So what's the difference between customer service and customer experience? Well, customer experience is much, much bigger 
than just customer service. So customer experience is about everything, every point of the customer journey, not just the service part, the product afterwards, the peer-to-peer -peer conversations. It's about everything I would experience with that product or service. So let me give you an example. I was flying home uh, last week from a travel leisure conference and I was on a Jet 2 plane, which I haven't been on for a long time. It's a holiday charter. Now listen, I'm not the target market for this. The business traveler is not the target market for a cheap, low-cost holiday airline. I appreciate that. So, But I'm on the plane and everything else, the, the customer service pieces are lovely, the, the staff are lovely, the check-in process was fine. It was all perfect. Uh, but I'm on the plane itself, the physical plane, and I'm trying to do some work. I'm trying to write this article, actually, the, the blog version of this. And the tables are tiny on the plane. So the, <laughs> this plane, I guess, is designed to take holiday travelers from A to B, and they've decided, well, we don't need big tables. But the tables also don't move. They don't extend. And so you, you fold down this tiny, tiny table. I've got my laptop perched on the table. I'm trying to do work. And every time I, I type any kind of <laughs> bit of heavily, the laptop starts sliding. So I spend like two hours trying to write an article, but the laptop continuously sliding onto my lap. So it's not a great experience, is it? Um, and the reason that the tables don't move is the same reason that the chairs, the, the seats don't recline. Because similar to lots of low-cost airlines, any moving part, a seat back or a tray table, can break. And if it breaks, then the seat's up, out of operation, and that costs money in terms of revenue. And so they, they, they kind of... They lower the experience because it's nice on a four and a half hour flight to be able to put your seat back, isn't it? But no, we won't give that to you because you may, that seat might break and then we might lose the money. And, and so they, they, they dial down experience to dial up profitability, which is a very, very dangerous place to, to be if you're trying to encourage brand emotive connection. Um, but the one I couldn't get my head around was, it was the first plane I've ever been on that has no blinds. Have you come across this? No blinds to pull down. They've got, away, they've got rid of all the blinds on the, on the plane. So we're coming back from Turkey to Europe, uh, in, into the UK and Ireland, and obviously the sun, it's a, it's a day flight, so the sun is beaming through the, the windows. And the cabin crew spent an entire hour walking down the, the plane as they sell their drinks, explains to people how to take the safety card and jam it into the window to try and stop the sun streaming in. Because people were trying to watch their, their tablets for movies, they were trying to sleep. And, and so here's an experience that, that doesn't make any sense. Like if you've taken the, I, there must be a reason they've taken them away, I don't know why, but it dials down the customer experience hugely. So that's a good example of a negative one. So what's the positive side of that? At that travel leisure conference, there was a, a guy spoke, he had five travel agencies, and he spoke about going beyond expectations for customers. So some of his customers would be on the elder side, and even in this digital world, they would still use a travel agent to book their holidays because they want the trust, they want to know what's happening. And for those people, he sometimes prints off all the boarding cards, prints off all the vouchers, the tickets, and drives to their home and hands it to them in the door. Because some people still, you know, my parents, the same 80s, 70s, they don't want to print boarding cards, they might, don't, might know how, they will eventually get to it. He does it for them to make it easy. And then if there's a family flying, he puts a little novelty kit together for activities on the plane, little kind of toys and coloring. And, and so he goes beyond their expectation, gives them small gifts um, to please them, to make them smile. And that's how you make connection. You go beyond customer expectation. So very simple. So that's customer experience, right? So we've gone from customer service to the basics, smiling and please and thank yous and all efficient processes and perfect, to customer experience, maybe going beyond their expectations, giving them a reason to tell our story to the peer network. Then what's the top? The top is customer intimacy, where you really lean into empathy and compassion and, and look to make a difference in customers' lives. You foster a sense of closeness. That's what intimacy is, fostering some sense of closeness with your customer. So at that same conference, they gave awards for outstanding customer experience and customer service and customer intimacy. And Tiffany won one of those awards. I want to tell you the story of what Tiffany did to win that, that award. So she's selling a holiday, she's, she's a travel consultant, and in walks one of her customers, an elderly gentleman, who is clearly very upset, and he wants to move his holiday forward. He wants to move his holiday forward to the next week to go to Thailand. And the reason he wants to do that is because he's just recently been diagnosed with cancer, and his treatment is starting, and he wants to have the holiday now before his treatment so that he can enjoy what he might think is one last uh, holiday. It's very sad. And so she does all the work for him, she changes all the dates and does all that for him, and in the process realizes his passport is out of date. And this is a huge problem now. So now he can't travel, he can't take that holiday before his cancer treatment, and it's, it's really horrible. So she, ta she takes a day off um, to go to the, tra to the passport office in London, where she doesn't live, so it takes her a while on the train to get there, to get an appointment for him as soon as she can, to get his passport before the, the holiday. And it turns out that he then needs to go in person to the passport office. So she gets that appointment for him, it's the following Monday, the day of his departure. So now she calls him and says, here's what's happening. And she then takes a second day off from her own job to travel with this gentleman, 
to London to the passport office to help them do all the paperwork and get the passport and then accompanies him across the city to Heathrow via the underground, again something he wouldn't be comfortable with doing himself to make sure he gets his plane on time. That is someone who's going way beyond expectation to help the customer, to literally hold his hand, metaphorically but probably literally as well. And he takes the holiday and he has a wonderful time. And Actually, an addendum to that story, I was talking to her after winning the award later that evening and she said that a few days ago, only a few days ago, he walked into the store and he, his cancer treatment has been successful and he's in remission, so it's a nice, nice story. But who will he travel with for the rest of his life in terms of holiday bookings? Who will all his family and his friends travel with? Because he'll obviously have told that story. They'll, they'll all walk into Tiffany and her, estate, her, her travel agency to, to book their holidays. And why wouldn't they? Because if you have someone like that who looks after you, who cares for you, who shows into some intimacy and empathy, that's what we like. That's how bonds of connection are made. So that difference between customer service, customer experience and customer intimacy is really obvious because ultimately the level of care, the level of, of support increases as you go up. Now how do you create an organization full of Tiffany's? At this conference it was with Hayes Travel. Hayes Travel is led by a wonderful, caring entrepreneur called Dame Irene Hayes. I've never seen a CEO who invests so much in her people, who genuinely empowers them all to make a true difference with the customer. So there's 5,000 employees, but she has 5,000 Tiffany's because this is a culture thing. People will respond and act with empathy and intimacy with customers if they feel they see it from the top. And every single layer of that organization, it's quite a flat organization even though it's so large, is just puts care at the core of everything you do. So the first thing is, is culture. You lead from the top with this. And the second one then, of course, is AI, because AI is coming our way and allows us now, with the data we have, to do hyper-personalization, to have depth and scale at the same time of connection. So you don't you can actually manufacture moments of, of intimacy with all the data, and now a, a customer service agent can have all that at their fingertips and be able to have a conversation that's maybe far more empathetic and far more compassionate based on everything that they know about the customer behind the scenes. So we're going to get a skill set and technology to be able to deliver this at scale, which is amazing. So make sure, firstly, you don't uh, mistake transaction loyalty for emotive loyalty and that you do something then to build that emotive loyalty, that you continuously invest, yes, in customer service and the basics, that you go beyond in terms of customer experience and you look for those moments of customer intimacy where you can really make a difference in someone's life. Now, if anything that you learned from this, you should learn, you should go and check your passport, make sure it's out of date, because not everyone's a Tiffany. Until next time, I'm Ken Hughes.